Jonathan, we have a situation. One of our junior solicitors sent an email to the wrong person and it contained the minutes from last week's very confidential meeting. Oh no, Charles. Was it bad? Was it bad? It contained phrases such as urgent matter, possible liability and Steve's karaoke performance. Yikes. So Charles, what's your plan? Jonathan, my plan is very simple. I'm going to find every copy of that email in inboxes and sent items and I'm going to delete it. Every physical copy of that email, I'm going to shred it. And then I will relocate the firm to a small island with no internet. Or, just a suggestion, we could use Microsoft eDiscovery. Microsoft what? eDiscovery. It's a tool within Microsoft 365 that lets you search across emails, Teams messages and files to find just the information that you're looking for. So Jonathan, you're telling me that instead of panicking about this and buying a small boat and learning to fish, we can solve these problems with a few mouse clicks? Exactly that, Charles. And I promise it's much easier than island relocation. Hmm, I was rather looking forward to the peace and tranquility of moving to this island. So what exactly? is e-discovery. Well, you've got to think of it like a powerful search engine within Microsoft 365, built for legal, compliance, and investigation work. Now, if your business ever faces a lawsuit, or maybe an audit due to regulations, or an internal investigation, then e-discovery lets you quickly search across emails, Teams messages, SharePoint sites, and OneDrive files to find the information that you need. And then it locks it down so it can't be deleted or tampered with. Now here are a few examples as to when you might use eDiscovery. Example number one, a former employee makes a legal claim against your business and you need to find all the emails and Teams messages between them and their manager over the last year? Or what about when a regulator asks for all the documents containing a certain client's name and account number to check that you're meeting your compliance rules? Or maybe you suspect that confidential information has been sent to the wrong person and you need to find it, preserve it, and review it very quickly. Now, in Microsoft 365, there are two different flavors of eDiscovery. There's eDiscovery Standard, and there's eDiscovery Premium. Now in Microsoft 365 Business Premium, you get the eDiscovery standard. Confusing, I know. But with this product, you can search on Microsoft 365. You can have case management and you can have legal holds. Now the premium version of eDiscovery is available in some of the enterprise Microsoft plans, or you can buy it as an add-on. Now the premium version gives you extra tools, for large or complex cases. You'll get tools like data analysis and tagging. I'm gonna cover a couple of those in today's video. Now in short, eDiscovery Standard is great for small to medium investigations, while the premium version is great for the big high stake cases. Now, without further ado, I'm sure you want to see eDiscovery in action. So let's hop over to my computer screen and I'll give you a demo. Okay, so we're in the admin center of our test tenancy in Microsoft 365. I'm going to head over to admin centers and Microsoft purview. Okay, once we're in there, I would go to solutions and e-discovery. But just before I do, I just want to show you something else in settings. If we go to roles and scopes, and if we go to role groups, and if I just sort these in alphabetical order and then scroll down a little bit here, you can see that we've got a role here called eDiscovery Manager, okay? And within this role, we've got different functions that we can do, things like exporting results, reviewing set tags, and all these things. You can see that I have granted myself the eDiscovery Administrator, even though this account is a global admin okay so you might have a global admin account you might try to do things and there might be some options missing and if that's the case this is the area that you need to look at okay but for now let's go to solutions and e-discovery 
And the first thing we're going to do is create a case, okay? Now, a case in Microsoft 365, it's essentially kind of a container that holds all the work, the data, and the settings for a specific investigation or maybe a legal matter, okay? So think of a case a bit like a, a digital file folder for one particular situation. It keeps everything in place so that it's organized and so that it's secure and accessible by the right people, okay? So the first thing we need to do is just give this case a name. So here we go. The case name is Hawthorne Bell Jones Case Investigation. So this is a Hawthorne Bell example, okay? It's about something called the Jones case. And what it is, it's a sensitive legal dispute that's just landed on Charles Bell's desk. We've been asked to locate every email, team's message and document regarding the Jones investigation. OK, that includes things containing key phrases. OK, I'm going to talk about key phrases in a moment and in particular, any communication between two people. That is Sean Walton, one of the junior solicitors and Sarah Jenkins. OK, so our job now is to gather all that data, preserve it and get it ready for the legal team to review. OK, so that's the background. What I can do, though, is click on create. OK, so our Jones case investigation has now been created. OK, so the obvious thing to do now is to create a search and we can do that in either of these places. OK, we'll give the search a name. OK, again, we can enter a description if we want. But for now, I will click on create. And now I've got my search. OK, you can see at the top look, we've got these little breadcrumbs. So cases, Hawthorne Bell, searches, and here is my search. So the next thing we do once we've created the search is we add the sources. OK, you can see here we've got a couple of options. We've got add sources and we've got add tenant wide sources. So sources in general are the places in Microsoft 365 where eDiscovery is going to look for information. OK, so we can add sources, which means we can add specific sources like individual mailboxes, OneDrive accounts, SharePoint sites or Teams. OK, if we want to search across the entire organization, we can add tenant wide sources. OK, so there's the two options there. Now, for this investigation, I will click on here and I'm going to be quite specific about what we're going to add. OK, so I'm going to look at Sean Walton. And I'm going to look at Sarah Jenkins, OK, because it's the correspondence between these two people that I'm most interested in. So by adding these, I'm going to choose mailbox and sites rather than mailbox only and sites only. But I'm going to concentrate on these two. So what this means is that eDiscovery is going to search their mailboxes, their OneDrive accounts and their team chats for anything that matches our keywords, which we're going to get onto in a moment. Now, by focusing on just these two people here, we can cut down on the irrelevant search results. OK, we can find exactly what we need a little bit faster. So once I'm happy with that, I will click on manage. That will take me to here. I can click on the drop down and it's going to show us exactly what it's going to search. Now, Sarah Jenkins is a new account that we spun up for this demo. So there's a few bits missing there, but that's not important. Click on save. And you can see that my data sources have now appeared here. OK, so now we move over to Condition Builder. Now, this is where we're telling eDiscovery exactly what to look for. OK, so we can enter our keywords in here. So I'll do that now. So things like urgent matter, things like settlement agreement and Jones case. OK. We can also add other conditions if we want, things like subject titles, date ranges and things like that, even specific specific file types. OK, and that will narrow the search even further. Now, there's another tool here which is in preview that's called search by file. OK, so this option, it lets us upload a file and what eDiscovery will do is find duplicates or related versions across Microsoft 365. OK, so that's a good tool. Now, moving on to a few other options here, you can see I've got an option here to create a hold. 
okay? So a hold is like almost putting the brakes on. It's preserving the data exactly as it is right now. So even if someone deletes it or edits the data later, Microsoft 365 is going to keep a copy safe. Now, the hold function is vital in legal or compliance investigations because it makes sure that the evidence can't be lost or tampered with while this case is going on. So what I can do is I can create a hold if I want. I'm not going to do in this example. Now, if we just go back to here to searches, you can see this is the case and we've created this search here. OK, so it might be worth pointing out that in a single case like this, we can have multiple searches so I can create multiple searches. For example, in this Jones case, our first search might look for any content containing the keywords, maybe urgent matter or possible liability. Then I might build a second search focusing just on files, maybe with settlement agreement in the title and maybe a third search looking at specific teams messages between Sean and Sarah just in the past seven days. Now, breaking it up this way into different kind of searches it's easy to focus on different parts of the investigation without mixing all the results together. OK, but in my example, I'm just going to use a single search. So now I've got all the information in here. We've got the keywords. We've got any conditions. We've got the data sources. We simply run the query. So this query is going to actually search now through Microsoft 365. It's going to bring back items that match our search. That's emails, documents, and Teams messages. Okay, so I'll click on Run Query there. And once it comes back, we can preview results. We can check what's relevant and decide what to do with it next. Okay, so our query now has finished running. You can see the summary here. We can see that there's five matches in Microsoft 365, that's five items that meet our keywords and conditions based on Sean Walton and Sarah Jenkins. So what I can do now is I can add to something called the review set and I can give this review set a name. I've got lots of different options here. I'm just going to click on add to review set. Now, the review set is where I can work through the items in much more detail. So just add those to the review set. And here you can see my results. So everything seems quite self-explanatory. You see, we've got an email here, which we can click into. And you can see different emails. I can click here. I can see the email. We've got Teams messages. OK, we've got Word documents. So all these match my criteria. OK, can come out of here and we've got a few options here. So we've got analytics here. Then those can be used to help me kind of spot patterns in the data. For example, finding duplicate files or grouping relevant items together. OK, we've also got a query option. OK, and that lets me run additional searches just inside this review set so I can narrow things down even further. So the next feature I want to talk about is tagging. OK, we can tag our files. So the idea here is we've done a search or we've done a, a query and we've got these results here. Now, the idea is that we work through these. Some of these might not be relevant. OK, some of them might be really sensitive. Some of them might uh, not be for the public domain. There's lots of different scenarios here. So what we can do is we can start tagging documents. So we click on tag here. Now we can create or edit our own tags. So I will go into here. Now let me go through and create a tag group to start with. OK, so the tag group is called relevance. So a particular bit of data might be relevant, not relevant, or we might need to review it. OK, we'll change this to single select. Now let's add another tag group. So this one is called sensitivity. OK, um, this is privileged, internal only or public. So I can save those tags. I can close out the tag screen. And what I can do, I can start tagging my items. So I might look at this, this Word document here. I might review it and think, OK, that is relevant and is privileged. So I'm going to apply those tags to this document. 
I can close out of there and I can carry on reviewing things. For now, I'm just going to tag everything the same. Okay, relevant and privileged. Apply those tags, click on close. Now, once we've finished reviewing the data and maybe tagging any items, we're now ready to export them. Okay, and we do that in actions, export. We give this a name and we've got several options here, but I can click on just export. If, I'm the, if I then go to the export tab here, and my export should appear as in progress. And there we go. That is now in progress. So I will come back when that has finished. Okay, so that has now finished. It's ready for legal review. Okay, so I can simply click on here. I can click on download and that file will download. It's downloading to my local machine, but we can download it and put it into any secure location. So that now is ready to hand over to the legal team. And as, as far as my role is concerned in, in the IT team, there's nothing more to do in this investigation. So what I can do, I can go back to cases. I can open this one up here and I can simply close this case. Okay. And it says here, if you continue the holds for this case, so remember we talked about the legal holds before, they will be turned off and content hold on hold will be released. Okay, so if you still want that legal hold, it's best not to close the case. And I can simply close the case. And you can see my Hawthorne Bell case is now closed. Okay. Now, something else I want to point out, this is the cases, but we've obviously got content search which is exactly the same format as when we create a case so basically we can search for content without creating a case so why would we do this you do it for a few reasons firstly it might be a quick one-off search maybe you're trying to find something fast like checking if a certain term appears in recent emails okay and you're not dealing with a formal investigation Maybe some kind of IT troubleshooting or admin checks or something like that. Or maybe some compliance spot checks. Maybe your compliance officer wants to confirm a keyword isn't appearing in company-wide communications. and It might not need a case. Or maybe it's just you're searching for content before a, an official uh, investigation starts. Okay, So before a, a case is formally opened, we can run a content search to see if there's enough relevant data to justify creating a case okay so that is another option as well so that's e-discovery in microsoft 365 so i hope you've enjoyed today's video on e-discovery in microsoft 365 part of all these wonderful data protection tools that microsoft has to offer i look forward to seeing you again soon